Hello boys and girls. It's Karen Lee coming to you from my living room in South Berwick, Maine for Karen Reads. I have another wonderful book to share with you today. It's written by Sarah Stewart. I couldn't find out much about her except that she's won lots of awards and lives with her husband in an old, old house in Michigan. It's illustrated by David Small, who's married to Sarah Stewart um, and lives in that same old house in Michigan. When he was a kid, was a kid, he was known as the boy who could draw. And he wanted to become, become a playwright. He wanted to make a living writing plays. But he wasn't successful doing that. But one of his college roommates noticed his doodling all over pads of paper in the house. And he said, you know, your drawings are really good. So he switched his major to art and was successful. He's done very well as an artist. And this book um, won the Caldecott. So I guess an official seal of quality. There it is. This book is written through letters and it takes place during the Depression, the 1930s in the United States. And that's um, a time when something was going on called the Great Depression, and it affected everybody. Um, the economy was really bad. Many, many people lost their jobs and were poor. And just like the pandemic affects us now, the Great Depression affected everyone then. So the little girl in this story, it affected her family. August 27th, 1935. Dear Uncle Jim, Grandma told us after supper that you want me to come to the city and live with you until things get better. Did she tell you that Papa has been out of work for a long time and no one asks Mama to make dresses anymore? We all cried, even Papa. But then Mama made us laugh with her stories about your chasing her up trees when you were both little. Did you really do that? I'm small but strong and I'll help you all I can. However, Grandma said to finish my schoolwork before doing anything else. Your niece, Lydia Grace Finch. There she is, packing up. September 3rd, 1935. Dear Uncle Jim, I'm mailing this from the train station I forgot to tell you in the last letter three important things that I'm too shy to say to your face. One, I know a lot about gardening, but nothing about baking. Two, I'm anxious to learn to bake, but is there any place to plant seeds? Three, I like to be called 
Lydia Grace, just like Grandma. Your niece, Lydia Grace Finch. And there they all are, saying goodbye to her at the train station. On the train, September 4th, 1935. Dear Mama, I feel so pretty in the dress that you made over for me. I hope you don't miss it too much. Dear Papa, I haven't forgotten what you said about recognizing Uncle Jim. Just look for Mama's face with a big nose and a mustache. I promise not to tell him. Does he have a sense of humor? And dearest Grandma, thank you for the seeds. The train is rocking me to sleep, and every time I doze off, I dream of gardens. Love to you all, Lydia Grace. And there she sits all alone, holding her lunch. She's arrived in Grand Central Station in New York City. Must feel pretty scary for one young girl. September 5th, 1935. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I'm so excited. There are window boxes here. They look as if they've been waiting for me, so now we'll both wait for spring. And Grandma, the sun shines down on the corner where I'll live and work. Love to you all, Lydia and Grace, Lydia Grace. P.S. Uncle Jim doesn't smile. And there's the bakery where she will help Uncle Jim and she'll live above the bakery. December 25th, 1935. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I adore the seed catalogs you sent for Christmas. And Grandma, thank you for all the bulbs. I hope you received my drawings. I wrote a long poem for Uncle Jim. He didn't smile, but I think he liked it. He read it out loud, then put it in his shirt pocket and patted it. Love to all, Lydia Grace. There's Uncle Jim rereading the poem. February 12th, 1936. Dearest Grandma, thank you again for those bulbs you sent at Christmas. You should see them now. I really like Ed and Emma Beach, Uncle Jim's friends who work here. When I first arrived, Emma told me she'd show me how to knead bread if I would teach her the Latin names of all the flowers I know. Now, just half a year later, I'm kneading bread and she's speaking Latin. More good news. We have a store cat 
named Otis, who at this very moment is sleeping at the foot of my bed. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. Uncle Jim isn't smiling yet, but I'm hoping for a smile soon. March 5th, 1936. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I've discovered a secret place. You can't imagine how wonderful it is. No one else knows about it but Otis. I have great plans. Thank you for all the letters. I'll try to write more, but I'm really busy planting all your seeds in cracked teacups and bent cake pans. And Grandma, you should smell the good dirt I'm bringing home from the vacant lot down the street. Love to all, Lydia Grace. So the secret place has something to do with the fire escape. climbed it all the way to the top and got onto the roof of the building. Perhaps that's her secret place. April 27th, 1936. Dearest Grandma, all the seeds and roots are sprouting. I can hear you saying, April showers bring May flowers. Emma and I are sprucing up the bakery and I'm playing a great trick on Uncle Jim. He sees me reading my mail, planting seeds in the window boxes, going to school, doing my homework, sweeping the floor, but he never sees me working in my secret place. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I'm planning on a big smile from Uncle Jim in the near future. June 27th, 1936. Dear Grandma, flowers are blooming all over the place. I'm also growing radishes, onions, and three kinds of lettuce in the window boxes. Some neighbors have brought containers for me to fill with flowers, and a few customers even gave me plants from their gardens this spring. They don't call me Lydia Grace anymore. They call me the gardener. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I'm sure Uncle Jim will smile soon. I'm almost ready to show him the secret place. July 4th, 1936. Dearest Mama, Papa, and Grandma, I am bursting with happiness. The entire city seems so beautiful, especially this morning. The secret place is ready for Uncle Jim. At noon, 
the store will close early for the holiday and then we'll bring him up to the roof. I've tried to remember everything you ever taught me about beauty. Love to all, Lydia Grace. P.S. I can already imagine Uncle Jim's smile. And the signs say, go up, you've almost arrived this way. Ah, there's Uncle Jim. He made it to the roof. And maybe you can see Lydia Grace and Emma and her husband holding sparklers in amongst the flowers. July 11th, 1936. Dear Mama, Papa, and Grandma, my heart is pounding so hard I'm sure the customers can hear it downstairs. At lunch today, Uncle Jim put the clothes sign on the door and told Ed and Emma and me to go upstairs and wait. He appeared with the most amazing cake I've ever seen, covered in flowers. I truly believe that cake equals 1,000 smiles. And then he took your letter out of his pocket with the news of Papa's job. I'm coming home. Love to all and see you soon. Lydia Grace. P.S. Grandma, I've given all my plants to Emma. I can't wait to help you in your garden again. We gardeners never retire. And there they are saying goodbye to her at the train. Okay. Another good book for us. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.